Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's me, it's Clayton, and I just got out of seeing Star Trek Beyond, and even though this summer has been full of action films that have either under-delivered or have just been plain bad, Star Trek Beyond is the perfect film to commemorate this series' 50th anniversary. With self-aware humor, great action, and an excellent cast, I believe it's my favorite Star Trek film of this rebooted trilogy, but uh, let's get to the story. The story revolves around the Enterprise crew, led by Captain James T. Kirk, led by Chris Pine, as they get stranded on an undiscovered planet that's by... and there being, and many of the Starfleet crew members are, are captured by an unknown alien named Krall, played by Idris Elba. It's up to the Starfleet crew members that remain, mainly the main characters from the show, Kirk, Spock, McCoy, Uhura, Sulu, you know, and Scotty, to to save the crew members, defeat Crawl, and to help and to help all the other crew members to escape this planet, al alongside a alien rebel named Jayla, played by Sophia Butella. Now, so what did I like about this movie? Well. Since this movie was directed by Justin Lin, the director of the Fast and Furious movies, the action sequences are freaking awesome. Now, that's not to say the other two films didn't have their action-heavy moments as well, but I think Justin Lin's combination of vehicle combat mixed in with cool uses of the Star Trek phasers and the new alien race that Kirk and company battle, it makes for some of the best action sequences in any Star Trek film in history. It's just so much fun to watch. Not only that, but the humor throughout the film reminds me a lot of the humor of Star Trek IV The Voyage Home, in that it's very self-referential, it's, it's based on how well you know these characters, and a lot of the interactions, especially ones with McCoy, played by Carl Urban, and with Spock, played by Zachary Quinto, a lot of those <laughs> character humorous moments would really only work with these characters. And it's clear Mr. Lin knows these characters by heart. Not only that, but I felt that all the characters were given a substantial amount of screen time. We, of course, have Kirk, Spock, and McCoy getting a lot of great lines, but we also have Scotty, played by Simon Pegg, who gets his funny moments. Uh, Uhura, surprisingly, gets some, some awesome moments and some humorous ones. And Zoe Saldana does a great job honoring the legacy of Uhura's character. Speaking of honoring legacies, Sulu, played by John Chu, has a lot to do, and I'm sure George Takei would be very proud of his performance, even if he's not proud of a certain thing that happens in the movie, but I won't spoil it. So yeah, we all know our old established favorites are great, because they were great in the first two movies, but how about the newcomers? Well, they fit right into this universe, and like they've always been part of the Star Trek universe. Idris Elba plays Crawl, and... I don't want to spoil anything about him, because most of his great character moments are best experienced on her, on your own. But the way the story unfolds with his character really shows that these writers know how well the series works when it comes to its antagonists, and Idris Elba's performance is absolutely brilliant, as you'd expect from him. He's ruthless, he's cunning, he's got ulterior motives. In my opinion, he's the best villain of the new, tri of the new trilogy. But he's not the only new character. We, of course, also have Jayla, played by Sophia Butella. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. She is a total badass, and not to mention a very brilliant young girl at that. I've never heard of Sophia Butella before, but hopefully her character, Jayla, gets inserted into the next few movies, because I want to see more from her. She's so funny, so action-packed, and full of so much potential that... I don't think one film can contain this character. Now, the story itself, you might think that this the action and humor would overtake the story, but the most surprising thing is how well the story is told, despite the fact that this film is the most action and humor heavy of the trilogy. The story, while somewhat simplistic, works very well for this movie, and it feels like, you know, an, ep an actual episode of the original S Star Trek series if an episode was elongated to two hours. But don't get me wrong, it totally works here in the way that it didn't work for Star Trek Insurrection. 
Not only that, but the visual effects are, as you probably expect, absolutely breathtaking. I was in a theater full of, of Trekkies, and we were all shouting, ooh, ah, that was awesome, a lot. Not to mention, the humorous moments really made the audience laugh. The emotional moments, that I will not spoil, made us cry the way we should. And the ending is beyond satisfying. It lets us know that these characters will be with, with us again in, in some time. I know it'll probably take another three to four years to make the next movie, but I'm psyched. So, do I have any problems with this movie? Well, they're more just minor, sorta nitpicks. For example, the opening of the film, while strong, I felt could have been a, either a bit funnier or a bit more action-packed. They try to go half and half, and, it, and not all the jokes in the opening work, but stick with them. They eventually get a lot funnier, and the action gets a lot more uh, visceral and, and kinetic. Also, there are some story beats that might anger some Star Trek fans. You've probably already heard them in the news. But for me, they actually worked out pretty well. But like I said, most of my negatives are really nitpicks because while this isn't a masterpiece of a Star Trek movie, it, it isn't, you know, the best of the best that still goes to Wrath of Khan, I think this is at least my third favorite Star Trek film of the 13 that are released. So with excellent humor, great action, awesome new characters, and just a sense that this is the most faithful film of the Star Trek trilogy. It's a perfect film for the 50th anniversary of this series. I give Star Trek Beyond a 9.5 out of 10. I'll see you guys in a few days when I review Batman The Killing Joke.